Yay. Craig is recording. But, no, I mean, I got got a smidgen of responsibility at the clinic this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a had a sit down with the center director, like nothing bad, but she, you know, she just was, was like, "Hey," walked into my office, like, "Need to talk to you about a couple of things." And like, I don't assume that I'm in trouble when that phrase comes up. Um, mm-hmm. I, I used to think that I was in trouble if someone said that to me, but I'm thankfully have dealt with all of the associated trauma with that. So I'm just like, "Yeah, what's up?" So she comes in my office and sits down, and she like plops this spreadsheet across the desk at me. And she was like, why are you not spending your allocated money for, like, trainings and things like that? And I was mm-hmm. like, because I get, um, it's like $1,000 a year that the company gives to me to spend on trainings for my continued education. And it can go for, like, travel and food costs and, you know, stuff like that. Um, she was like, why are you not spending all of this money? And I'm like, I honestly didn't remember how much was in it i just know that i get reimbursed so i've really only been doing like the bare not the bare minimum i've done a couple extra things but you know i've just kind of stuck close to like i've got my requirements met for the year she was like well you need to do more and i'm like okay that's fine i will go on trainings because i mean basically they count as like pseudo vacation days especially if there's like digital you know, some kind of online webinar or some kind of digital training thing that I get can get sent to me to where that I do it on my own time. But I get to take those as days that I don't have to go into the clinic and see clients. Mm. And so she's like, you're missing all these opportunities for extra certification. And you're missing all these opportunities to take extra days off that you get paid for. And I'm like, you know what? You're right, Anita. I don't know why I hadn't thought about it that way before. And that, like, I'm, I wasn't doing it to like save the the, you know, quote unquote, save the company money. Mm-hmm. I just was like, oh, I've got my stuff done. I don't remember what the budget is. I could probably ask, but I'm busy, and it's just like at the back of my mind. And um, so I'm gonna figure that out and do some more trainings. I've got like 600 bucks left for this year, and it resets every year uh, at the start of the calendar year. So I'll probably squeeze in a couple trainings before the end of the year um, and then plan to do a whole bunch more. But kind of piggybacking onto that conversation at the end. She was like, that wasn't actually the main reason that I wanted to talk to you. Just like I noticed that when I was doing um, all of our our chart audits, because like each of the, the providers also have their own charts in the system for like, did you pass your background check? You know, what it, have you met your requirements to continue your license, like, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know, so they have to audit our charts every so often. Mm-hmm. She's like, but she's like, I was trying to figure out who could be my uh, tertiary person for state. And I go, uh oh, she goes, what do you mean? Uh oh. And I was like, you're about to give me responsibilities, aren't you? She was like, well, I mean, you are the the most reliable person here. You're, you know, you're always here. You live close by if there's an emergency. You're now the third, like, after me and Sarah, you've now been here the longest. So I I can't, like, you know, I can't trust. And she, you know, rattled off a few people's names. She's like, I can't trust them to do it. Here you go. (laughs) And she, like, passes this huge binder across the desk at me. And I'm like, I mean, please tell me you're going to explain this a little bit more to me. She's like, yeah, we'll have a, a like an official meeting later because I know you got people on your schedule and I got stuff to do. She's like, I, I blocked off your schedule on Thursday. We'll sit down, um, maybe get like some coffees or something from Dunkin'. Everybody's very excited. Dunkin' Donuts just opened in in Dayton, um, which I'm excited too. I like as far as like chain coffee shops go. I like or coffee places go. I like Dunkin' a lot. It's been a while since I've had them actually. Yeah. Um, right now they've got, since the store just opened, they've got tons of deals. Um, for a few more days, you can get a free coffee, like a free, like any medium sized, uh, drink. Actually, it's not just coffee. Any medium sized drink you can get for free with purchase. And on the app, it's a $2 minimum. But if you go in the store, there is no minimum. So you can buy one of their, like, like a single donut hole, which is like 
like 81 cents and then get a free medium sized beverage that could cost, you know, seven or eight bucks. Mm-hmm. I might have done that a couple times. Um, but anyway, she's like, you know, maybe we can get some coffee from Do- uh, Duncan or some donuts or, you know, take a, a long lunch, go get some lunch and just like talk about this. And I'm like, yeah, OK. She's like, why do you sound so sad? I'm like, it's just it's responsibility. She's like, you can handle it. You wanted to you want to be center director here one day, don't you? I'm like, yeah, you you took the job that I wanted. She's like, well, think of it this way. It'll be like training for when you're the director. I'm, I, then I then I like gave her an eye. I'm like, you're not planning on going anywhere, are you? She's like, not right now. I was like, okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, because I don't need a reason to fire Sarah, right? Oh boy, we can't. Honestly, I don't know if I could fire her, even if I wanted to. We cannot. We're trying to hire a third nurse right now, and we cannot find one. I think part of the problem is the company just doesn't want to pay enough. Mm-hmm. Which seems wild to me, because they've never really had that issue before. Although, I mean, we've ran all of our salaries up there. We have, like, negotiated and negotiated and negotiated. But, like, look, we all have got all these certifications. We've been here the longest. Like, pay us, or we leave. So, you know, I, I kind of can see where they're coming from on that standpoint. I mean, still, fuck capitalism and all that jazz, but... You know, it makes sense. They're like, you you have tapped us out. Because, like, I've gotten a 10% salary. No, not quite 10%. It's like 8 point something percent salary increase two years in a row. I know Sarah did also. Denise. Oh, got, you know, got to have that money to give to Trump. Yeah. Uh, Denise only works four days a week now. I think she kept her salary, but she went down to four days a week in lieu of... A, a pay raise but you know still that is an effective pay raise for how much she's working I actually don't know what Anita gets paid but it better be a lot that woman works so hard too hard in my opinion what I'd love to happen is to get my uh, licensed clinical supervisor um, well license and at that time you know if if, if fate happens and it lines up perfectly at that time take over running the clinic and just do supervisionary work as opposed to carrying like a full caseload i want to teach like i don't want to go teach in a school school environments suck as far as i can tell from uh you know youtubers like zoe b and other people who work in academics that i've talked to but like doing training and things like that i like that i like teaching people That's like my smidgen of of additional responsibility. I don't really have any other stories from the last couple of weeks. Like that you want to share. (laughs) Well, yeah, there's one that you know of, but we're not. That's that's one that I'm going to keep secret. We're not going to talk about that on the air. Um, but stuff the clinic, stuff with other people in my life. Like things are pretty chill. I've been working a lot, but you know, that that is what it is. Actually, I do have a story. I don't know how I forgot about this. I've been sitting here playing with the stitches the whole time, which I shouldn't be doing. Um, I guess slight trigger warning to anyone listening. If if you don't like body stuff that might be a little gross. Um, I have had two sort of nodules on one of my legs for a long time. One of them is on the surface of the skin. The other was under the skin. Um, they were both hard um you know like hard nodules that you could like poke and then obviously the one on the surface of the skin you could see um and I, the one that's been on the surface of my skin I've had since probably 2017 and the one mm-hmm. under my skin I noticed in 2020 not going on in 2020 I, I didn't really think too much about that one well you had uh, a lot of time on your hands right um but so I just kind of like it's one of those things of, like, you get used to a thing. They didn't hurt. They weren't irritating. Like, you know, they were just there. And then a few months ago, the one that's under my skin, I'm like, I think this might be, like, growing or moving or changing in some way. Like, I don't know. Like, I need to go to a dermatologist. So I scheduled an appointment. I went. I had them both checked out. The one on the surface of the skin 
fine. I forget what she, it's something, something calcification. And she said it's really common in people who have diabetes because um, sometimes your body just really struggles to heal. Even if you're taking care of yourself, you know, long term, you ha- might have short periods or weird windows, like where that your uh, blood sugar levels are off and that can cause disturbances and, and how well your body can heal. So she's like, stuff goes wrong with people healing. They develop these, you know, these things. She's That's like, I see scar tissue. Basically, yeah. She's like, you know, I could remove it, but odds are it'll grow back. You know, like, look, I can, I can poke it. And like, she poked it. And she's like, there's no nerves in it. It's just like, you know, I mean, like you said, scar tissue. She called it calcified something or other. And then she's like, the one in your leg, no idea. She rattled off. She had a student in there, too. The student was really nice, like a physician's assistant student. But she had her own minion. So <laughs> she, like, rattled all this stuff off to the minion. And um, I was also, like, talking to them. Uh, yeah, asking you're not supposed to address the minion. I, well, I mean, it's not my minion. This is a different office's minion, so I can address the minion. But I was talking to the minion. I was talking to the, to the provider. Just asking some questions, making conversation. Basically, she's like, I mean, we could leave it alone. Like, it's been in there for years, and it hasn't caused you any real trouble. I could do a punch biopsy on it, or we could just cut it out. And I'm like, cut it out. Cut it out and biopsy it. If it turns out to be nothing, then I guess I won't just won't have to deal with, you know, uh, a hard ball under my mm-hmm. skin. And if it does turn out to be something, then we've already cut it out. And so she's like, okay. So they went and they cut it out, and they cut out this, like, uh, like a tablespoon, like, um, scoop. If mm-hmm. you took two of those and put them on top of each other and made like a ball, yeah. They they cut something that big out of my leg, uh, and it was it, it was weird because it, it was it was just hard. The whole thing on the outside was hard. She was like, "Well, the outside of it's calcified. That could be." You know, still, it could be all kinds of stuff inside of there. So they, you know, went to, are going to send it off to mm-hmm. biopsy it. I should find out. I think she told me by Friday what the oh, biopsy results were. Apart. Great. Yeah. But um, that was interesting. Just like, you know, obviously they numbed me. Mm-hmm. So to watch uh, a, a two women, like, shoving their fingers, like, I don't know, to the, like the second joint down inside of my leg. That was odd. But is it yeah, any there, will not recommend. Also I wasn't numbed at the time. Yeah. It was an it was an interesting experience. Then they came in, the 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 person afterwards to to sew me up and she's like, ooh, that's deep. <laughs> and I'm like, I yes, I'm aware. She's like, well, I can't sew down in there. We're gonna have to cauterize that. I was like, okay. I mean, I, I know what cauterization is. Like, is there anything I should expect? And she's like, no, they numbed you, right? And I was like, yeah. She's like, okay, hold still. And then, you know, she goes in there and she starts cauterizing the inside. And that shit hurt. Mm-hmm. I could feel it through, like, five needles of whatever they had injected me with to numb yeah. my leg. The first time she zapped me, like, I jerked a little. And she's like, you got to hold still. And I was like, I was not expecting that to hurt. <laughs> it was weird. That was the only time, like, the student was like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, one, it really hurts, but two, like, the smell, the smell of your own burning flesh. Yeah. Weird. But that was that. Was that. Cauterized the inside, sewed up the outside, sent me home. Um, I only worked a half a day and then had the appointment, so I just went home and went to bed. Once all the stuff wore off, it hurt a lot. My leg was very sore for the, the rest of the day. Can't imagine why. Yeah, can't imagine why. So it's weird, like, now that most of the swelling has gone down around the stitches, like, I can poke. And except for, like, right on the stitches, there's no more, like, hard under the skin. It's weird. I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. But it's weird, just because I've been used to that being there for years. So, medical stuff. Yay! Uh, our our current minion at the office... Uh, while, you know, professionally she goes by minion number, let's see, what minion number is she? Nine? Ten? Well, professionally she goes by minion number ten, we'll say. I, I, I like to think that 
Uh, she's walking around with a, a basketball jersey on with just a 10 on it. Right. Um, her her actual name is Sydney. And she was like asking me some questions. She's like 22, 23. She's asking me some questions about it uh, on on Monday. Or yesterday. Yesterday is Monday. Uh, yesterday. She's asking me some questions about it. And I was like, it'll happen to you. She's like, what do, what do you mean? And I'm like, it'll happen to you. You don't think about it. You don't think it will. But, I mean, you'll turn 30 or 35 or 40 one day. And you'll have stuff like this that you'll need to go get checked out. It'll happen. She was like, I take really good care of my skin. And I was like, I mean, okay, sure. Maybe that actually works and your skin's not what gets messed up. But, like, something will get messed up. It'll happen. There was just, like, a look of existential dread on her face. She's, like, very nice. She's one of the better minions that we've had. So to sort of see the life drain out of her eyes a little bit. On the one hand, I felt kind of sad about that. But on the other hand, I was like, yes, mwahaha. Suffer, minion. Uh, Those are all of my adventures for the week. So to to swap over to Shop Talk, Show Talk. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Game Club. Yeah, how I do you want to plan anything else? Like I feel like we we're going to talk about Baldur's Gate for a while. I mean I did uh, get some uh, uh possibilities to p- and put them on the show notes already. Okay. What do we got? Uh Baltro Dev writes into their will that it can't be used for gambling. Yeah, you know, it's nice to see an indie dev yo know, actually caring, right? Yeah. That that isn't Stardew uh, Valley's concerned Dave. <laughs> Prison Architect t- 2 delayed indefinitely. And Valve is working on a new system to re- uh, to filter out unhelpful reviews. And I've looked. I don't see uh, any uh, contributions for Game Club. Fuckers. <laughs> well, Cube's contribution was buying us the game. True. I'll, I'll, get, I'll let him let it slide. Hey, it's Vicky Blake. Good for you, Vicky. Still writing for Eurogamer. Yeah, I'm still like at the meat and potatoes of Act Two, uh, but I just never really sat down and powered through it because you know I come home just bleh. yeah. I didn't like, play. Oh, uh, uh, and it's kind of funny. Yeah, you know, I didn't play as much as I wanted to. I only have fifty hours on my save file, right? Yeah, I didn't play. I didn't play it in July, but I mean, I have three hundred eighty-one hours in game. I've got two completed playthroughs, two that are in Act Three. Like, I think I'm. I think I'm good. Mm-hmm. I think I'm prepared. Oh, uh, see, I don't have a completed playthrough. I'm in Act Two. Uh, I've been sent off to the Dark Justicar uh, Gauntlet. Yeah. And it was more, I got to that point, and I just didn't have a weekend where things were calm enough to go deal with it, because, you know, last weekend I was going to get my car, or, you know, going car shopping. Is that right? Yeah. Or, uh, weekend is kind of a loose term for me, because... Right now, I'm getting Fridays and Saturdays off. So, yeah. But my day's off. How about that? Right. I mean, it's still, you know, mm-hmm. your effective weekend, so. So, yeah. By the time I set, settle down to uh, hit that, you know, guy go do laundry, guy uh, deal with sh- uh, grocery shopping, you know, it's just, it never really clicked for the last couple of weeks. And there's also uh, the case of my kleptomania. <laughs> <laughs> where uh you know like part way going into act two uh basically everybody was like loaded down and i had to spend like two or three hours just sorting out everything <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's the, you know that's a the, one of those mm-hmm. this is the way things for this type of game yeah so of the articles that you grabbed or that you put in the three uh I got Bellatro, <laughs> excuse me, and Valve. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know enough about Prison Architect 2, or Prison Architect 1, even. I, if you would like to talk about that, we can put it on I there. I mean, it's I don't... more paradox kind of falling apart. Gotcha. Because it's a paradox game. 
Yeah. And I do have an interesting game for next week to talk about. What is your interesting game for next week? Uh, do you uh, want me to keep teasing it? or uh, uh, I mean, it, it, It's very appropriate for... I need to spend a little bit more time with it, obviously. It's very appropriate for our heritage. Our heritage? Something related to the Civil War? As in the podcast. Oh. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, I thought you meant like our Southern heritage. No! <laughs> Not that's not a phrase I'm used to you or used to hearing you say. Well, shit, dude. I, something related to Kerbal Space Program? Yes. Like KSP two something no. back to that back to the original KSP. Okay, I'm gonna have to just link this to you. Uh, I guess. Oh, let me. Something no. to do with Taylor Swift? No. We're here to something related to Harvester. Oh. Okay. I got you. Yeah, I never would have gotten this. <laughs> I have a little bit of time with it. And I've been enjoying it. Yeah. But it's definitely, yeah, you know, need some more, like, a few more patches, especially the performance patch that they're talking, that he's talking about. Uh, uh, I, I grabbed it when it released on 1.0. And it was like 10 bucks. Yeah. Because they had the uh, fight and flight bo- bundle with uh, simple planes and bomber crew, which I had both of. So, you know, and that with the the compounded uh, uh, discount from the bundle plus uh, kit hacks uh, pr- uh, price drop, it brought it down to like half the price on launch. Yeah, I've uh, I've been playing. Factorio mm-hmm. um, have gotten, I don't know, a dozen hours into a new playthrough in anticipa- anticipation of the space, upcoming space DLC mm-hmm. expansion or whatever it is. Um, but uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is the other game that I've played that's going to come up probably next week or in the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. It is very JRPG. Sweet baby <laughs> Jesus. Like, in a good way, unless you don't like that kind of thing, where it's like, let me play for, for 20 minutes and then have 30 minutes of cutscene. At least at times. It suffers Basically from, like the worst of Metal Gear Solid. It, it experiences, you know, and it's up to you whether it's a bug or a feature, but like, you know, Final Fantasy levels of like, Okay, we're going to keep introducing new mechanics. We're going to keep introducing new mechanics. We're going to keep introducing new story points. We're going to keep... And it just keeps going. And I'm like six hours in, and it still is like, okay, here's the next part of the tutorial. (laughs) I'm like, I thought we were done with this. But I like it. Uh, I Yeah, I I shouldn't go on too much. I'm going to a wedding this weekend. I'm going to take my Switch. I intend to be playing that a lot. <laughs> we're we're making a little week, weekend trip out of it. The people who are getting married uh, have got some money. And so they rented out or paid for whatever the right word is. I don't think they rented out the entire facility, but like a hotel. Uh, like it, it's it's not just a hotel. Like it's it's a, a thing, a place. They've got a hotel. It's got the grounds for the the wedding venue. Mm-hmm. They've got like big pool, jacuzzi, rec center. Like they got all kinds of stuff, and it's just like a you know a weekend getaway kind of place. And everybody who's attending the wedding, uh, was it has a room there that they can use if they want to. They don't even have to. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. But we have it from Friday night to Sunday morning, and the wedding is on Saturday, like in the late afternoon. So we're going to make a little weekend trip out of it, but also like there's going to be plenty of time where I'm sitting around playing on my switch. Yeah. Speaking of the switch, I need have really liked uh, all her uh, steam deck ex- uh, accessories. Nice. Well done. Although she hasn't used them a lot yet, but she's like planning out how to use like, especially the keyboard because she's seen, uh, I got, I got her, uh, inadvertently two mice because I screwed up and got one that wasn't Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but yeah, she could always use another mouse. Uh, a Bluetooth keyboard that's foldable. Um, the thing that she's used the most is I got her some 45 volt uh, uh, USB C chargers. Yeah. And it also quick charges the switch that she also plays it on a hell of a lot, along with some long uh, USB cords. Um, <clears throat> trying to think of what else I got. I mean, it was like a bunch of little switch accessories, or uh, switch slash Steam Deck because yeah, they're interchangeable. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it went over well, and I did get myself something at the same time. <laughs> All right. Of course. Uh, on my own dime. It wasn't, yeah, like she bought it for me. But I got myself a, a dock for the Steam Deck. Ooh. <laughs> Technically a dock. It's uh, from Azures. So, yeah, a good brand. Uh, it's a USB-C uh, with power delivery going through it. Main reason I got it is that it allows me to use you know, normal thumb drives with it. You know, USB-A. Yeah. But I could still plug in a USB-C into it as well, and it can still ch- you know, charge. But it has the capability to put out uh, HDMI as well. And it was like, you know, 20 bucks. Yeah. And it's small enough to fit into my kit. Very nice. So speaking of very nice, we've been sitting here talking for an hour. <laughs> we, we have been. We have been. Uh, that's why you... we, I don't get to talk for a while, don't right? Don't get to talk for a hot minute, yeah. Are you ready, though, sir? Do you have Audacity up? Uh, hang on, loading it now. Kisses. Where's the, uh, where's the rest of you fuckers? <laughs> oh, doing their own thing, I guess. They're they're too busy, uh, you know, infiltrating uh, Moonrise Towers. That has to be it, right? Yeah. So, on a on a different note, to before I send Craig to bed, when you were like, "Oh, you just three D print a PC," just for shits and giggles, I went on to Thingiverse and searched PC and search just start scrolling through. Most of it is like, you know, old. Uh, old parts for things like you know commodores and you know things mm. that commonly break it's like hey you know you can 3d print this and just you know attach it to the pc but i found some really neat useful things too someone has three like this it has to exist as an accessory you can purchase somewhere but somebody created a drawer that you can put in a five inch drive bay on a case oh yeah i've seen those before i don't know why i've never thought about that before that's such a good idea. Then I, I got all this shit sitting on my desk. I just put it in the drawer. Uh-oh, right. Well, there's also one I saw. Uh, this was way back in the 90s. And you're going to laugh because, you know, the whole ha-ha, your computer already has it. A cup holder. And it had the cigarette uh, lighter that, you know, would be, you know, 12 volt out. Yeah. Could be an accessory port. I mean, obviously, it's got, you know, it was the 90s, so it's, got, you know, most people would use it as, you know, a cigarette lighter, but still. Yeah. I mean, most of the ones that are built, at least these days, for that, because, you know, who the hell is putting stuff, uh, you know, using that drive bay anyway, right? Besides yeah. weirdest like me. Uh, uh, it's just, you know, poor quality stuff because, you know, it's, it's not used anymore. Uh, I think LGR had uh, had a video about at least one version of the yeah you know, the cup holder cigarette lighter thing, and there's uh, uh not my current case, but my previous case. It had an accessory drawer that was built into the bottom uh, that would hold yeah you know, like spare screws and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think I've seen the LGR video. With the the shelf or not the shelf the uh, the cup holder, mm-hmm. and I think his conclusion was that it was a silly idea that was like way too flimsy or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I like this. I don't know why I've never thought of having just like a little shelf or or a little storage drawer. Like that would. Well, you're I mean, welcome. I've got like a desk organizer that just has See, little, like flash drives in it. I wonder how long it would take to print. 
download files. I mean, I'm I'm not going to start it. I've got something else I'm going to start on the printer before I go to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's let's download this real quick and see 3D print files, PC bay drawer, extract file. Uh, uh, it's multiple components, which I guess makes sense. It's going to be the longest part of the whole thing: opening mm-hmm. Ultimaker to import the model. I'm going to go find, after we're done here in a couple of minutes, I'm going to find just a smidgen of a snack, just a little something to nibble on, and then go to bed. You know, I'm pretty much going to just go to bed because I got work uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Same. Same. All right. Open files. Uh, oh, oops. That's the wrong folder. Oh, they don't all fit on my build plate, which I guess makes sense. I've only got uh like in i think it's nine by nine inches mm. to print on and this is five and a quarter inch bay these fit uh let's do this preset wanted to be kind of strong so we'll use a fuller infill slice <laughs> what that's a long time for what this is how long 17 hours 45 minutes Ooh, hope you nobody see. bumps the table Use 159 grams of filament. It's all four pieces. That's not awful. I mean, I've gotten to where I... I like. I hey, you're going to be away for a weekend. I close my door. Oh, the print that I'm about to start is 28 hours. Some like some things it, it can do really fast. And I figured this would be fast because it's like super simple. Let me, let me change one of these couple of these settings. Let's go to the fast balanced... Okay, that cut a lot of time off. I got it down to 10 hours, which is still a lot more than I would have ex- expected. Could be a lot of reinforcement. Yeah. Probably the best way to do this, instead of printing all of them at the same time, is to print each thing individually and just run four separate prints. Oh, yeah, that's way faster. Breaking it up into four separate runs. Uh... Total time for all four pieces. Oh, this one piece. Uh, But yeah, total time for all four pieces, eight hours. For 168 grams of material. 3D printing is is definitely not fast. You can do some things fast, but usually if you go fast, then it causes a lot of errors and it fucks up and you wind up wasting Mm -hmm. more time than just letting it take its time and do it properly. But it's actually like I bought a, a a printer that does a really good job compensating for movement because it's like jiggling around anyways when it's it's going full tilt, you know, and my tables, it, it shakes a little bit. But I mean, I don't think it would be OK if I just walked up to it and like smacked it while it was working or, you know, dumped the table too far over. But it does pretty well compensating for minor vibrations and stuff. But yeah. Uh, I might just have a really small cup of hot tea. All right, I'm putting Craig to bed. Good night, Craig. Night, Craig.